Good morning. morning. Welcome. Uh, Just a few announcements. Tonight we have Bible study on Zoom at 7. Uh, Wednesday we have our Lent services at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. This Thursday we have our once a month men's Bible study at Infinity Hall. Infinity Hall Thursday at 7. And then next Sunday is Spring Forward. So take note of that. You can now greet your brothers and your sisters. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 20. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, or your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or female servant, his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. St. Paul writes, The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God that through the folly of what we preach, to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the verse. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. We read together. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, what signs do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are together again. What a privilege it is to be with brothers and sisters in Christ. What a privilege it is to know that we stand together under the cross of Jesus as forgiven sinners standing in your grace. We pray this day that your Holy Spirit would work in us as you have promised that we may stand steadfast in the wisdom that is Jesus throughout our lives, and finally, to give you praise eternally. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated. Just because something has the same name doesn't mean it's the same thing. I mean, maybe in America, one of the most famous examples is football. For us, it's a game played with an oblong object with big men hitting each other. For the rest of the world, it's soccer. But it goes other places too, right? There's things like post. You post a letter, that means we put it in the mail. But if you're an an accountant, you post the figures. You post them at the end of the day or the week or whenever. That is the way words work. Sometimes they seem to be referring to the same thing, but they are completely different. I'll give you an example. Wisdom. So often we think we know what we're talking about with wisdom, but wisdom has two drastically different understandings. Even if we're after the same goal, wisdom can mean different things. Paul says there's two types of wisdom. And Christ is the wisdom of God. That wisdom of God that is Jesus leads to salvation. That wisdom of God that is Jesus brings to us the blessings that God desires us to have. This Jesus is wisdom. And that's why Paul will say that he knows nothing but Christ and him crucified. For when we look at Jesus on the cross, we realize the truth about many, many things. What we realize is the result of sin. We realize that our sin, though it may seem harmless to us at times, like it may be very little because it doesn't seem to be something that's big and and huge like murder. But our sin uh, of gossip, our our sins of lust, our, our sins that so often just grab a hold of us, you know what? They are just as offensive as anything else before our God. And what did they do? But these sins deserve death. Adam and Eve thought they had done a little thing. I mean, after all, That fruit on the tree was was pleasing to look at. It looked tasty. And with it came the promise of wisdom. But it brought death. It's a little thing to take a bite of fruit. But where it led was to Jesus on the cross. See, that is the result of sin. It may create chaos in our world, there's no doubt about that. But even more so, it breaks our relationship with God, and death is needed. And Jesus went to the cross to die. You want to see the results of your sin? You want to know the depth of of your sins and what it brings about? Think of a good Friday where Jesus was stricken, smitten, and afflicted, where according to Isaiah 53, he was marred beyond recognition that people would not even want to look at him. Christ is the wisdom of God. And that wisdom teaches us that our sin, no matter how small it may look, no matter how insignificant it may feel, it leads to death. Christ is the wisdom of God that leads to salvation. Because when we look at Christ and him crucified, we see that he's borne our sin, that he's taken it upon himself, that he, Jesus, in his own body, bore the complete anger and wrath of God, the very anger that you deserve, Jesus took on. As a teacher yells sometimes when they get pushed beyond their limits, so God has poured out that anger upon Jesus. 
so that neither you nor I who stand in faith have to fear. See, Christ crucified is the wisdom of God to salvation. He shows us the way to salvation is through him and him alone. There our sins are forgiven. There we have acceptance before God. In him we even live our lives of holiness. Christ is the wisdom of God that leads to salvation. And the world and its wisdom cannot see it. Now make no mistake, there's a lot of good that comes from the wisdom of the world. I mean, we know that. We have been vaccinated for things like uh, chicken pox. We've been vaccinated for things, those of us of a certain age, like uh, other types of illnesses that are no longer needed. We have you all, essentially in our country eliminated polio because of, of the wisdom of this world. But make no mistake, at the same time, the worldly wisdom misses the point. For it will never, ever lead us to God. For the worldly wisdom misses the reality of sin. It simply does not understand it. Over 40 years ago, there's already a book called Whatever Happened to Sin? Now we see sin as just a psychological problem, a problem that came because of our upbringing, because of what has happened to us in our past. And while there's an element of truth to it, it misses the reality. We sin because we're sinners. It doesn't understand the depth of sin is worldly wisdom either. For the world, the depth of sin is to simply surface. We can remove it easily. We should ignore it because that sin is not that great. We should ignore it because deep down, worldly wisdom says all people are basically good. You see the problem? Worldly wisdom doesn't take sin seriously at all. Matter of fact, in our world today, it's denied. And what's even worse is this worldly wisdom is offended by Jesus. I mean, how can one man take on the sin of the world? That seems to be foolishness. It seems to be nonsense. How can this Jesus take my sin when he died almost 2,000 years ago? And how can that one man pay for the offense that has been given? How can he say, I will bear somebody else's sin? And the world mocks that and thinks it's foolishness. Even among some Christians, they don't see the cross as essential. They think it is just an accident and that Jesus has forgiven sins without any sacrifice or death. You see, the wisdom of this world, this world is offended by Jesus. How can he be the only way? There's many ways to God, our world says, but not just Jesus. And how offensive it is when we as Christians stand up and say, no, this man who died, this Jesus who came, this Son of God who became man for us, bore the sins, and he is the only way to heaven. And the world sits, shakes its head, and pats us on the head and pushes us along as silly little children. There is no way in the eyes of the world that this is wise. Do you want to know the truth? God chose to be his people what is weak. Do you want to know the truth? God chose what in the eyes of the world, those who were foolish. Do you want to know the truth? God chose those of the world who seem to be nothing to be his people. Do you want to know the truth? God chose what was weak and what was seemingly insignificant and what was nothing in the eyes of this world to save this world. For he chose Jesus 
to be scorned. He chose Jesus, and in him is the true wisdom of God. In Jesus, he chose what the world despised, rejected, and hung and nailed on the cross. And in him, we have this forgiveness. God chose what the world did not want to look upon because they were offended. But the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. And this Jesus is our salvation. This Jesus is our wisdom, for he shows us the way to God is through him and through him alone. This world and its wisdom has a great allure. It attracts us. This world and its wisdom draws us to it kind of like those bugs to those bug zappers. Why? Because it surrounds us, doesn't it? Every time we turn on the TV, and it doesn't matter whether it's a mystery, a sitcom, or whether it's the news, the wisdom of the world is there. It hits us and surrounds us. We hear it with our ears. We read it with our eyes. It is spoken every time we have the opportunity to listen to the world. And while it surrounds us, and while it begins to make sense after a while, do not forget this. It leads away from eternity because it has to, because it does not take sin seriously. In fact, it denies sin. Nor does the wisdom of this life and the wisdom of this age take Jesus seriously. At the best, he's a moral example. At the worst, he's a fool who leads people astray. You see, here is the problem, right? We all speak of wisdom in one way or another. The wisdom of the world calls upon people to look in, to see and trust themselves, to find in themselves their own reasoning and strength. And Christ, who is the wisdom of God, leads us out of ourselves and leads us to God. Christ, who is the wisdom of God, he is the one who has come and brought to us himself and brought to us God. Do you know what that means, my friends? It means we have to be careful of how we live in this world. We have to be careful. And we have to discern what is true wisdom and what is false wisdom. The answer is not to adjust to this world. The issue is not to adjust to this world and to begin to think that if we make an adjustment here or there, the world will accept us and then we can make inroads into this world. No, when we try to adjust to this world, what it ends up doing is leading to losing Jesus. We lose Christ when we try to adjust and then make a commendation for this world. No, leave the wisdom of the world where it belongs. Leave it there, for it cannot teach us about sin. It cannot teach us about the reality of sin. It may teach us things in science at times but it can lead, not teach us about Jesus. It cannot lead us to the God of heaven. For Jesus is the wisdom of God that leads to, leads to heaven. For as St. Paul puts it, he has become wisdom for us. That is, he has become our righteousness. He alone makes us acceptable to God. Jesus is our holiness. He is the one who works in us to produce any good that comes out of us. Jesus is our redemption. He alone has paid the price for our sins. And he alone has led us to the promised land of heaven. See, my friends, that is the wisdom of God. I do not want to disparage our world, for that too is a gift of God. Science has done marvelous things. Medicine has done miracles, it seems, in many ways. And yet, spiritually... It can never do what Jesus can do. So walk carefully. Follow clearly what is true and wise. For there are competing understandings of what truly makes one wise. The world's wisdom simply does not understand sin. The world's wisdom cannot see sin's reality or its depth. And above all else, the world has rejected Jesus. The world's wisdom cannot handle that there's only one way to heaven. They cannot handle in this world there's but one way to God. 
and yet God has chosen what is small, and God has chosen what is insignificant, and God has chosen even something the world has said is nothing at all to bring to us salvation. He chose what is despised to be wisdom for us, for he chose Jesus to be the wisdom of God that leads us to him. There is no other way, nor do we need to search for another. For Jesus is the forgiveness that God has given us. Jesus is the acceptance before God that comes. Jesus is the wisdom of God for us, for our salvation. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes our understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. To God alone be all glory. Amen. Please rise. We confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God found in Christ Jesus and for all according to their needs. Gracious Father, we thank you for sending us your Son to save us. We thank you that in Christ crucified we find your wisdom and your righteousness for us, and holiness for us, and our redemption. Teach us to know our sin, and even more, to know your Son as the only Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our congregation and for the mission and ministry of St. John. Through your gospel, work faith in our hearts and all the fruits of faith, that we might joyously serve you together. This week we especially pray for Mike and Linda May, Patri Patricia Myers, Jared Maynard, the McCollum family, and to Dave David and Tony McTaggart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our nation. We pray for our, those in leadership, that you'd give them wisdom and integrity. We pray for our daily bread, and we thank you for all those who protect us and our needs. We pray that you would bring an end to COVID, but in all things, Lord, we ask that you would guide the affairs of this world for the good of your church, that your gospel might sound forth, that all might repent of sins and turn to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. Teach us the sanctity of life and how precious it is. We thank you for the birth of Lucy Schilling's grandson, David. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the sick, the recovering, the anxious, 
We pray for Virginia Millar, Deanne Reading, Robert Ryder, and for all those we now name in our hearts. Heal their bodies, Father, according to your will. Give them strength to endure their trials, and in all things fix their eyes on your Son, Christ crucified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, continue to comfort those who mourn, including the family of Kenny Fry. Comfort them with the message that because your Son lives, we also shall live, and neither death nor life can separate us from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And to your hands, O oh Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for our offering. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with the angels and the archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name 
evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, and you sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, to renew, and to strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver us, and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you, body and soul, to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.